Praise the Lord with the School of the Spirit, uh, Kings Fire Church, live on Facebook, and many countries tune in every uh, uh, week on this. Some of them are on live right on Sunday with us. Some of them go, come on later and make comments. But anyway, we're just getting the word out, and these messages are on YouTube also. I have 88 messages on my YouTube channel now. And so uh, people are studying. I met someone last night where we were. We went to visit other church to pray for that lady. Uh, there's been he's uh, subscribed to my YouTube channel. He's watching my YouTube videos. I didn't know he was doing it. And so you know, God bless. We don't have a lot, but we have some. So God bless you. Uh, let's pray, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We invite your holy presence in Jesus' name. Father, let your will be done on earth in this meeting today as it is in heaven. Lamb of God, I speak healing. I speak deliverance today. I speak freedom from chains and fetters. In Jesus' name, I speak freedom from past hurts today. Father, let your angels fill this room. We thank you, Lamb of God. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 I'd like you to go to Matthew 17. I leaned over my wife when uh, Sean was quoting the scripture last night. I said, that's in my notes. You mm -hmm. know, uh, that was interesting. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, we're going to store it like maybe on FM light. But then we're getting ready to go a little heavier in some areas of that day. But uh, be honest, uh, the subject <laughs> I, I studied I'm going to be bringing to you, uh, it ministered to me. I, it ministered to me in areas I didn't know I need ministry in. And so um, we'll start with this at first in Matthew 17, <clears throat> verse 14. Glory to God. Yeah, like a child. You have that recording? Yeah. Okay. We're good. Matthew 17, verse 14. And when they had come to the multitude, a man came to him, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an epileptic. Now, let me stop there just one moment. We've seen epileptics totally healed, even grown men with epilepsy, totally healed. They'll come off all medication right here in Kingston. Amen. Amen. A lot of times people hear my testimony, it's a four-way land, but right here. So anyway, as a side note, we'll charge extra for that. <laughs> for he is an epileptic and suffers severely, for he often falls into the fire <laughs> What's that? and also into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon. Notice it was not a sickness. It was a demon. Hallelujah. Okay. Yep. See, uh, if your flesh is giving you trouble, you have to crucify the flesh. Yes. But if a demon spirit is giving you trouble, you got to cast it out. That's right. Amen. You don't crucify a demon. You don't cast flesh out. Amen. 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 Okay. So I'm just reading. And Jesus rebuked the demon and it came out of him. And the child was cured that very hour. The disciples came to Jesus privately and said, why could we not cast it out? So Jesus said to him, because of your unbelief, for surely I say to you, if you have the faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I will be doing some ministry on fasting very shortly. I may do a Team Supernatural, but we were recorded, so you can pick it up on YouTube if you're not in that. And uh, uh, people are very confused about that. And so the thing is, uh, uh, he cast that demon out. He said, if, if you had the faith of, of mustard seed, other scriptures say grain of mustard seed, you can speak to that mountain. Uh, he said, nothing would be impossible to you. And so our faith is not in ourselves or our own ability, but the omnipresent God in whom we trust is in God. Amen. It's not in us, it's in God. Sometimes to release great faith, you've got to really leave yourself behind. 
You have to move in that supernatural dimension. Uh, you have to be familiar with that secret place. Mm -hmm. The Bible talk about uh, uh, the battle of the shadow of the Almighty, uh, that secret place of the Most High. There's a place where a, a man, a woman, and their God meet. And you have, have to have that experience with God that you go into his presence. And so faith is a grain of mustard seed. And that's really not going to be my main subject. You understand in a moment. <clears throat> We're going to take a major turn here. But look at the seed of an oak tree. The DNA for the whole oak tree is in that seed. When it returned to the ground that God ordained it, you've heard re return the word message. If you're not, it's on YouTube. You need to hear that message. It's the direct revelation from God that really messed up a lot of my theology when God spoke it to me. Amen. And, and the thing is, when that's put in the ground that God ordained, that, that DNA of that whole tree is there. And as Jesus said, except a grain of wheat falls in the ground and dies, it buys alone. That outward part is not, not the germ. The, the germ, the life of the seed is inside, but God made the ground to rot it. And you and I have to get to that place that our flesh is crucified. That that life of God can begin to shine out. The life of God, the light of God can begin to come out of us. Because Jesus said that out of our innermost being would flow rivers of living water. Again, let me just repeat myself for probably hundreds of times. You start with biblical meditation, Joshua 1. Meditate on the word of God day and night. Don't let it depart from your mouth. And you will make your way prosper. You're saying his word. You're meditating on it the biblical way. You read it, you think about it, and you speak it. That's biblical meditation. That's why you see the Jews in front of the Western Wall. I've been to Israel twice. And they're, they're reading their prayers. They're speaking the word. Amen. That's biblical meditation. Let's go from meditation to revelation, from revelation to manifestation. I, I talked to a wonderful man of God the other day on the phone, and uh, he, he's going to many of Randy Clark's uh, uh, teachings, I mean, multiple <clears throat> of, of his classes and teaching, and he's gone overseas, not, not Brazil, one of the other places he goes. I forgot where it was. He's gone all that, and, and he studies the word. I mean, he, he is soaked in the word. But he told me, he said, David, only once in a while do I ever see a miracle. You know why? A good man of God, a wonderful man of God. Amen? But there's a scripture that said that sometimes we can be ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. So when somebody said something they wanted to do in, in, in a type of ministry the other day, I was talking on the phone, I was on a Zoom call with them, and I asked him, I said, okay, what results have you had in the past with this program you have. Well, well, I've never really had a result with it. And I told him, I said, I will not preach a message until I own it. If I don't own it, I won't preach it. I stand up here and look dumb. Amen? Amen. If I don't own it, I won't preach it. Amen. Amen. It's got to be a part of me. I cannot release what has not gone from here to here. Amen. Out of the innermost being will flow rivers of living water. Amen. <laughs> Praise your Lord. Oh, I'm going to have to excuse my son. My son is very, you know, okay. if you will. We'll be praying. Lord, we pray for his son. Catch you later on YouTube or Facebook. Amen. Yes, touch him. And so the DNA of that oak seed, is, that tree is in there. Okay, now listen, it's close. That mustard seed is small. So is the childlike faith we're going to discuss in a minute. Let me say our little faith will be canceled out if we do not trust God. And we're going to talk about childlike faith. I didn't want to start with the mustard seed, but we're really going to be talking like, like a child. That's the title of this message, like a child. And we're going to get in some heavy areas. Uh, some of you may be really touched. There may be a few tears. I don't know. But this is a good place. You can, you can relax here. This is a safe place to be free. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. we all been there and done that, okay? And so our, our little faith would be canceled. We do not trust God. And so I want you to go to Matthew 18. Verse 1 through 5. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus saying, 
who then is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Then Jesus called a little child to him and set him in the midst of them. It said, As surely I say to you, unless you are converted, become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one little child like this in my name receives me. And so he said that except we become as little children, and we're going to be talking about that today, what it really means, and we're going to go to some areas that you don't hear too often. What does it mean to be like a little child? Why did Jesus say that? He didn't say, except you'd be like the, a big boy. No, he said like a little child. What is a little child has that many of us do not? Certainly. Amen. And uh, dead on on that. And so um, it said that, verse 4 again, Therefore, whoever humbles himself as his little child is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Now think about it. Uh, they were asking about the kingdom of heaven. And when I think about this, I'm not, I don't think, most people think about going to heaven, you know, in the final destination. You know, I've been to third heaven several times and, and uh, caught away in the spirit multiple times. I couldn't tell you how many times. And, and uh, yes, that will be my final destination. But I already have the ticket. I'm already going there. But I want you to know, also, you will have trouble entering into the kingdom of heaven right here. Remember, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah. Matthew 10, Jesus said, when you go preach, preach the kingdom of heaven is near right here, right now. Mm -hmm. Kill the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out demons, freely receive, freely give. Bring heaven to earth. But I'm here to tell you today that if you do not have that faith of a little child, that, 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 that understand that what that little child has, you will have a tough time right here on terra firma earth to enter the kingdom of heaven right here to operate because pride will block you. Past hurts will block you. We'll talk about that. And so you need to access the supernatural now. So let's go a little bit deeper to this message. Children who have not yet been exposed to hurts of life, trust. Pastor Lou, you were right on, on, on target there. Think about it. that little child that's never known rejection yet and uh, have never known uh, somebody hurt them, somebody cheated them, never had anybody molest them, etc. Uh, they trust. You tell that little child the moon is made of green trees, they're going to believe you. Amen. Childlike faith. That they have a trust. They are born with that baby faith. They act on it regularly. They believe what adults tell them. Uh, there's no condition on their trust. That's how God wants us to trust. Amen. And we'll go in how to release you into that kind of trust. When children get hungry, they don't ask their parent how much money you have in the bank. They just assume the parents prepared something for them. Man. I, Amen. I've known grown men that I pastored years ago that said all we did was go down to the corner of deli. We never had a home cooked meal. That's a crying shame. Yeah. I like to cook. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Man, man, I had home fries going yesterday morning, going at it. <laughs> They're all gone. <laughs> uh, but they, they trust us as parental providers that we they trust that we already prepared it for them. <clears throat> you know, go, hey. Hey, Daddy, hey, Mommy, how much money do you have in the bank? Do I get to eat today? They're not going to do it. And they're sure out there hungry. We're involved in feeding hungry out of our ministry, okay? I can't, can I sit down to a nice meal and know I had the ability to feed someone out there hungry without doing it? We don't just talk about it. We do it, Amen. okay? I, you know, I had, had a slogan in my ministry, when you sow here, it goes there. Amen. I'm not going to buy a steak with it to eat it. It goes there. Amen. 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 If they need or want anything, they're not afraid to ask for it. <clears throat> and myself, I was blessed to have a good earthly father, but I realized that for many of you, that was not the case. 
You have to ask the question, did you really trust your earthly father? Don't answer that out loud, please. But uh, did you really trust your earthly father? Uh, you may have had a good one, did you trust it? But you may not have. And I find in most cases, uh, one time I was ministering my church and I, I, I made a statement. I said, your heavenly father loves you. I saw one of my grown men in the church. I mean, he actually grabbed his arm and like, just cringed. Like, oh. And later on, I found the back story. I understood. Okay. But, but he had been hurt horribly. And so what you experienced was unique to you, but it shaped you in many ways. You may not realize it, but hopefully today you're going to understand that it shaped you. Whether your earthly father hurt you, somebody trying to get it, they made it. Your earthly father hurt you, or whether, whether you, you, you had an absent earthly father, maybe you never even knew who your father was. But you have to realize if that's the case, guess what? You, you felt abandoned by someone you never even met because God made us to have a mother and a father. That's God's will. And even in the spiritual sense, uh, the Bible says that you have many teachers, but you have not many fathers. And that's the problem. Many, many Christians are spiritual orphans. Oh, they run to every conference. We're not against conference. I go to conferences, but only if I feel a thump in the spirit. I don't just run to everywhere. Amen? Amen. You know, when I pull the wallet out and start rolling, I know that God is sending me there. But uh, a lot of people go here and there. I just know this is going to do it. This is going to do it. I'm going to be whole. I'm going to be whole. And they come back. I had a, a wonderful woman in my church one time. She went to everything. Don't tell how many thousands of dollars she spent on conferences over a year. But when she come back, she's a wonderful woman of God. But I never saw her win one soul to God. You know, I mean, if you want to be an auto mechanic, they work, work on his car. <laughs> I got your email earlier. <laughs> but anyway, you want to be an auto mechanic, you go through school to be an auto mechanic, and you graduate high grades, but you never work on a vehicle. What was the use? Amen. Amen. Go to med school, become a doctor. Amen. Amen. But you never help someone. What was the use of it? So many go to and fro. I have to feel a thumb to the spirit that I'm supposed to be here. Amen. I have an invitation right now to go somewhere in uh, Florida in January. More likely, I'm not going to go. Oh, it'd be nice. I mean, January in Florida, it sounds always good. You know what I mean? Warm. <laughs> Amen. That's why I used to love to be overseas in Asia. I'd be looking on the, on the news in Northeast buried by snow, and I was waving in the 90s. Yeah, I love hot weather. Some of you may not, but you hear my accent, right? And um, Amen. So, but the thing is, uh, God is moving, and we have to do something with it. Amen. We have to do something with it. Amen. I was excited, the man of God. I was talking to you last night. When I found out he's on my YouTube watching the video so much. I told him, send me an email. I'm going to give you four or five that I would highly recommend to absorb first. You can do the same thing. Send me an email or text me on Facebook, you know, private message. And, and I'll recommend, I just recommend about 10 to a pastor in another state the other day that their leadership now is going to start showing my YouTube videos on their Wednesday night meeting. Amen. Amen. They're hungry because, see, they've gone to everything, yeah. but they're not seeing any manifestation. The Apostle Paul said, Don't let my preaching be the enticing words of man's wisdom, but let it be a demonstration of the power of the Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. That, that's why I'm doing this. I'm doing this, God. I want you to be equipped. And by, because you're, you're exposed to this, some are being exposed just only by YouTube or Facebook, but because you're being exposed person to person, there's a special importation that you're getting a hold of. You don't realize, no matter, I could talk about knowing the ark and your faith will go higher, okay? For the supernatural. Amen. And so, um, Psychological studies tell us that we as human beings tend to associate the attributes of our primary father figure or lack thereof with God. And what you will have to do is make a switch. <clears throat> no matter what, what kind of situation you face in life, whether it's with the early father that 
was abusive in some way or earthly father was never there. Earthly father was there for a little while and abandoned the family. You hear that all the time. You have to make a switch. That I'm, I'm going to have to convince you your heavenly father is not like that. Amen. And you have to trust your heavenly father. Yeah. You have to forgive your earthly father. Amen. Release him. Amen. But trust your heavenly father as one that will never leave you or forsake you. Amen. He said, I'll be with you always, even to the end of the world. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Your heavenly father is omnipresent, which means he's present always and everywhere. He's right there. Yeah, I told you the story, the little story the other day about the, let me repeat for you didn't hear it, about the man and woman were dating. He had a pickup truck. She's sitting right next to him. You know how that goes. And then later on, the story goes, was real or not, it's a good illustration. Uh, the story goes that they got married, and months and months later, she's sitting by the window on the pastor's side. She said, honey, I wish we were close like we used to be. He said, well, I never moved. <laughs> God never moved. Amen. If you're not close to God, he didn't move. Amen. You did. Amen. Amen. I shared that with you, Dave. I, I'll share again. Always allow the spirit to soften your heart. Listen to this carefully. Allow the Holy Spirit to soften your heart. Forgive your earthly father if, if you need to, to. And let, he's called Abba Father, or really Abba Daddy. Yeah. Right. He's right with you right now. Your heavenly father will never die. He'll never <laughs> disappear. He'll never disappoint you. He'll never leave you. He'll never reject you. He's right there. Crazy. And I think of myself, as I told you, uh, though I had experience with God at seven years old, I was baptized, full immersion in water, baptized in the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues at seven years old. Crazy. But I was never grounded in the word of God. My mother was in and out of church. My dad wasn't in church. Thankfully, my dad was a kind, gentle man. Even before he got saved, I baptized him 15 years before he passed on at 93. And uh, he was serving God faithful. My mother was serving God faithful at 93 when she passed away. But, but the thing is, uh, you know, I had a good earthly father. Amen. And I thank God for that. And so I don't have to make a big transition of trying to trust my heavenly father. But I told you, like at 30 years old, I came back to God. You know, though, you know, at 13, I came to God for a short time. We went to a Christmas program in a local church. They invited us. My mother and I, my cousin lived with me five years like a brother. And, and uh, uh, we were all renewed in the spirit. Then we moved to another city, a little country church right around the corner of our house. And always the doors unlocked. And as a 13-year-old child, I walked to that church. I prayed two or three hours at a time, praying and tongues, weeping all by myself. Just weeping before God, the presence of God. And I step out on the little country road. And a while back, a few years ago, we, we were uh, in, the, in Woodville, Texas. And I took a photo. I found the old church. Another group owns it now, but they kept the building up. I took a photo of it. And Prophet Damien Pierce, some of you know him. He told me, David, I've seen a certain year uh, in your life, at a certain age, uh, something major happened to you. I said, brother, it's when I was spending that time praying in that church. In fact, I just visited. That was only months after coming back from that Texas visit. I said, I got a photo. I'll send it to you. He said, really? He always said, really? Really? You know, like he's surprised. He ain't surprised. <laughs> really? But anyway, amen. But the thing is, uh, we in a short time within now, when we moved back to the city. I was raised in immediately. I, I, I started running the wrong crowd, back in the world, drinking, smoking. Uh, everything, foul mouth. I mean, it went to, I was 30 years old, you know, I, I went to the military. God kept me alive in Vietnam. We got married at 18, but it wasn't until I was 30 years old, I came back to God. Amen. But a while back, I, the Lord let me understand that even all those years I was in the world, he's protected me because he knew one day I would say yes. I believe that God in, in his foreknowledge, had he known that I would never surrender to him, I would not have had a protection I've had. I've shared that with you over and over. But the thing is, I, I just pictured him just recently, that, that him watching me all those years and all my mistakes and all my sin and, and hate and bitterness and drunkenness, nicotine involvement, all these things. I, he let me just imagine him sitting there smiling, 
David's going to come back. Amen. David's going to come back. It, it did something to me. Praise God. Yeah, he, he's out there right now. He, he's coming back. He's coming back. At 30 years old, when I said, yes, Lord, it was forever. Amen. 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 We've seen not only over 12,000 miracles, but we've seen thousands and thousands of saints. We started uh, one church here, four in Cambodia. We started five churches. Many heard the gospel. Had I not, my, both my parents left this world saved. Had I not served God, they would not have been saved. My, all three of my children are saved. They're, they're serving God. Amen. They, they would have been like I was, probably hanging over a bar stool somewhere. Amen. I don't want to touch a drop of alcohol. Amen. I know it says it's sin to be drunk, not to drink, but sin to be drunk. But I don't know many Christians that uh, drink a little bit casually and don't get drunk. Amen. Amen. It's kind of like, well, I'm not going to commit adultery, but I'm going to get a little close to it. I'm not going to get close to it. Amen. 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 You ladies that's in our Team Supernatural know when my wife was down, I'll say visit. I said, if you arrive at my house for Team Supernatural on Friday and there's no other cars there, my wife's gone, please stay in the parking lot until other people arrive and come in. Y'all can... Y'all wave your hand. Y'all can verify that. Amen. Amen. I, I'm not worried about me and I'm not worried about you, but it's just good practice. Yes. Cover yourself. Yes. Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, don't allow unforgiveness to harden your heart to the only one who can heal you. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Let me say something prophetically right now. I talked about how, you know, God let me see that he was waiting on me, smiling and waiting on me. Some of you, though, you're saved going to heaven. He's been looking at you smiling, waiting on you to be totally set free. That he can release the kingdom of heaven through you. That's prophetically. Amen. 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 We receive it. Yes. Um, uh, Second Thessalonians chapter two. Today's the day. Amen. He can do it a moment when a man can do it a lifetime. Oh, yes. Amen. Amen. You know, I mean, a lot of people go to a whole lot of therapy. So, you know, I'm not against therapy or as some of my family members call it, they can, when my close family members can't pronounce the H. And so they go to therapy and when it gets bad weather, it thunders. But, but the thing, I'm not against therapy, but let me tell you, most psychologists I've met in life, they need therapy. <laughs> you know, it's just, they're kind of like some Christians you see, they're granola Christians. Nuts and flakes. <laughs> that woke you up. Okay. Okay. Or some liquid. <laughs> okay. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10. And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. Now, why do you put that in here? I'll show you. A lot of people think, when they read that, they think about, they didn't love the truth. They didn't get saved. And certainly could cover that. But it says, they did not receive the love of the truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Jesus is the truth. He's reaching out right now today, this service, to embrace you. But some people, because they have those father wounds, they will not receive the love of the truth. They stiff arm him. Don't touch me. Wow. Much like a lot of times you find people have been molested. They don't like anybody to give them a hug or hardly touch their shoulder. Amen. Yeah. You can be healed. Amen. I had post traumatic stress disorder from war horribly. You couldn't touch my back, Lou. I mean, turn around, I was, man, I'm going to punch you. And you ask my wife, firecrackers in Texas? I look like popcorn in the bitch today. It's okay. It's just, just firecracker. One time, right when I got back from war, uh, we're staying at her mother and dad's house. I was going to go to my duty station in Colorado. I was still in the Army. Finish out my other six months, make my two years. And I was sitting up in bed. And I thought I was, I was out on, on a, a LP patrol and I'm watching for the enemy. And my wife sits up next to me 
and I grabbed her hair, rear bag, and said, David, I, and I've come out of it. Thankfully, I didn't hit her. Amen? Yeah. But the thing is, I had a horrible case of this. You could literally fire a shot behind you, and I won't flinch. God. Amen. I did, even in the Philippines, where you know, I worked with the Mindanao, uh, the island of Mindanao, there's four Muslim rebel groups in, in ISIS on the island. Uh, the boys play rough. And, and uh, I worked in there, and I was in a service, and suddenly a big truck backfired outside. It sounded like a 30 or 6 went off in the meeting because the church was real close to the road. I didn't flinch. I stopped the whole thing. I said, I want you to know you saw a miracle. And I shared my testimony. Because normally I've already dug a hole. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And remember, you had those places in your life. It's like I use the example over and over, like my arm got cut, it got really affected. Guess what? Everybody bumps it. But when you get healed, nobody bumps it. Amen. You've had places in your life that somebody could touch today and you will have a reaction. Ha! Oh, why'd you do that? Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. I, I saw a lady run out of my church one time when, when actually one of my leaders was like, hey, how you doing today in the foyer? And they're like, no, 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 no. And she ran out of the church and ran through the parking lot because in her mind, he was going to hurt her like men did when she was a child. Amen? Amen. Her dad had died at an early age and she was molested over and over by every Tom, Dick, and Harry her mother brought in the house as a young little girl. And suddenly in her mind, this man's gonna hurt me. Just totally out of kilter. I, I was standing there. The man was doing nothing wrong. But you had that place somebody can touch and you scream out. Or we talk about forgiveness, right above your shoulder place, I, cordial three and eight. My opinion is the seed of your human spirit. That's where you're walking down a tree and you see a rouse that you feel <gasps> right here. Amen. <laughs> And many times I discern people being possessed right here. Uh, uh, I'll pick up other things right here. Many times I'll, I'll feel a thump and then God will speak to my mind a prophetic word. Okay, but if you think of that person's name or that situation that happened to you and you feel that sick, sour feeling right here, it's a sign you have not forgiven, you have not been delivered. Don't live with it. You know, the world tells you, just get over it. No, get healed. Amen. Amen. If I have time, I'll read the scripture. But Isaiah 61, he came to heal the brokenhearted. Yes. And so you have to receive the love of the truth. Jesus is that truth. <laughs> have childlike faith and let him heal you. Remember that child trusts fully because that little child, Jesus said, except you come, become as a little child. That little child trusts totally. Because they have not experienced life's hurts. They had no one hurt them yet. Amen. No one rejected them. Right. No one sold them a cord to go fall apart later. Uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Go on and on. But they had that childlike faith. If you're going to enter the kingdom of heaven, you're going to have to have that. You have to have that relationship with the Lord. Like most people do not understand. I mean, a friend of mine put a a, a beautiful, uh, maybe one of you, I can't remember which one. I got so many things on Facebook going, but be beautiful sky view. And I said, uh, oh, it's Kayla Engel put it on there. I said, I know the one that painted that. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I, I know him. I know him. I know the one that created this universe. Yes. I, I, I know him. He's Abba Father. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Just stick closer to brother. Oh, many people I've loved has walked away from me over the years. You pass your ministry as long as I do. People you love, you get them off drugs, off of alcohol, you shack it up, you get your teacher to study, you get them married, and sometimes they'll put a knife right in your back and walk away and talk evil about you, get on the phone and try to get everybody to leave your church, and, and, and they're going to do that. But you have to love. Forgive them and love them, but move to the next one. Do not get caught up in decoys. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, over the years, I spent many years trying to help what turned out to be decoys. They were not about to get right with God. Mm -hmm. But the enemy put them there because he knew David would try to help them. 
And I spent all my time, and finally I found out that don't work. And I, I'm wasting time. There's people out there that really are hungry and thirsty that I do not have time to help because I'm over here with this decoy. I have, my, I have a rule that, you know, uh, if, if a person needs prayer in their home and, and they can get to a doctor's office, they can get here. Amen? Amen. 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 I don't know. Well, I'm going to run over there every time. No, you can get here. If you can get to a doctor's office, the emergency room, you can get here. There's people who would change all their plans if there's a, a mercy comes up and to, to go to the mercy room. I'm not against the mercy rooms, okay? Amen? Been to some. <laughs> But the thing is, they'll change all their plans and run to the emergency room. We say, well, we, we have a night of miracles to be healed. Amen. Well, we're busy. We, we can't, you know, we have this responsibility. They, they would change it all to run to the emergency room to get help. Because they believe they'll get help there. There's nothing wrong with emergency rooms. But they don't trust God like that. Amen. 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 I used to teach a Bible study right off Albany Avenue. I met a lady by the electric deal that's there. Uh, I forgot what his name, but anyway, it don't matter. Uh, I was there, a uh, part she come out, I introduced myself, invited her to church. When we first started church, we had an old church van. I drove it six hours every Sunday. Did all the preaching, teaching, took up the tithes and offered, helped clean floors. My wife helped clean floors. And and, and, uh, and she, always, she always told everybody, I met him first. I saw him first, like, you know. She told me when I'd be preaching, uh, she from another place, she'd run up, grab, grab the pulpit, started hugging it when the power of God hit, hugged the pulpit, making the sign of the cross, just hanging on, weeping. And, and I teach her Bible. My wife and I went and taught her Bible study at home. I'd be teaching her Bible study. All of a sudden, she'd jump up off the sofa, run to the TV, turn on, and check her soapbox out and see what's going on, turn it back off, and go sit down again. And then she used to say, I need food, man. We said that we already had a few cans of beans left for our own kids. And we give her some of our food. And one time when Wise was open, we we're up there, we saw her. And uh, she just got her check, whatever check she got. And she got her grocery. We'll take you home. We took her home. We opened her pantry. She could open her own grocery store. I said, she got the last can of beans from me. Amen. Wow. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> but but you're going to have decoys like that. Don't let the enemy take your time on it. Okay, let's go to Acts 2. I'm almost through. You know what that means? <laughs> I'm closing. Again, <coughs> preacher may close 20 times. I, I think I'm almost through. <laughs> Acts chapter 2, verse 36. Therefore, that all the house, and we see therefore, it means a little was just said, and Peter just got through preaching on the day of Pentecost. Acts 2, 1 through 4, they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. That's the evidence of it. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, and then he preached right through Acts 2. And we're picking up here, there, verse 36. Therefore, and look what he just said. Let all the house of Israel know surely that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Notice verse 37. And when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. It said to Peter, I'm going to go back there and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Lord, hey, they're cut to the heart. Their heart is cut open. Their heart is broken. They're probably weeping. They realize, wait a minute, I have need of something. I'm not whole like I thought I was. What shall we, what do we do? Verse 38, then Peter said to them, repent and let everyone you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sins. And you, receive, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promise to you and your children. To all there are far off, as many as the Lord our God shall call. Amen. That promise there, they're cut in their heart. Let me ask you, when was the last time you were cut in your heart? I've been in meetings over the years at different places that the Spirit of God was so strong. I don't care how, how well we were living, how good a job we thought we were doing. Our hearts were broken open, and we're weeping and weeping and weeping. Kind of, kind of like even Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 6, he saw the Lord high lifted up. His train filled the temple, heard the serpent cry, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. And, and, and suddenly he said, I'm a man of unclean lips. He was broken. Suddenly he went all that. 
Lean not to your own understanding. Commit yourself to God. <clears throat> He'll direct your path. Isaiah was broken. But see, that's where God had to put him. The way in the kingdom of God, the way up in the kingdom of God is down. Amen. Not lifted up in pride. Look at me. <clears throat> the more I see, the smaller I feel. Amen. If God don't do it, it won't happen. Amen. <clears throat> He's my source, my only source. Amen. Jeremiah was the same way. God told Jeremiah in chapter one, he said, hey, before you formed the womb, I knew you. You see, read, watch my substance four time on YouTube. You don't have that revelation. You need it. You, ha you have things that God planned for you you don't even know about. Amen. 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 Go further on. <clears throat> so I'm not going to rein myself back. <clears throat> but the thing is, but Jeremiah he said, before you were formed a woman, I knew, and I ordained you a prophet of the nation. I already set your whole ministry up. Jeremiah I said, oh. It wasn't all my good looks and my good clothes. No, I, I feel like a child. That's where God needed him. God had to bring them low to touch their lips. One with the coals of fire, one with the hand. To touch the lips of the coals of fire, the anointing of God. To touch them. To speak the word of God. They had to be brought low. There's too, many, too much pride among Christians. But look who I am. Come on. Without God, I could do nothing. Oh, yeah. how, how could someone be lifted up that's seen the miracles we've seen? Mm -hmm. Think of this. I heard a prophet. Uh, you may have heard of him. He's way down in Louisiana. He's in a legalistic group. Uh, prophet T.W. Barnes. He passed away at 91 years old. A wonderful prophet of God. He was going to his house and praying. He's the one I heard in 83 in a camp meeting uh, in Texas. He said, I laid my hand on a man that didn't have a rib and filled out my hand. Years later in Cambodia, I did the same thing. I said, well, he did. Let me give it a shot, you know. And that rib fell out of my hand. All his friends was poking it. That new bone was there. Amen. 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 But he made a statement I'll never forget. How can someone be lifted up in pride if Jesus Christ, the virgin-born Son of God, could say, I could do nothing except the Father show me? Yes. How much more than I? Born in sin and shame and iniquity. Bought by his precious blood, should be able to say, I can do nothing Amen. except the Lord show me. Amen. 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 Yes, thank you, we need to get rid of religious spirits around the body of Christ. I, I was talking to a lady on Zoom the other day, and another guy was there, and she said, I want to go to the bars, and I want to go where the law says in the bars, and, and I want to play my instrument, I want to reach them, and I'm not against that if you, you can handle it. And uh, but the thing is, I got to, I didn't say nothing, but I got to thinking, I said, you want to reach your laws, <laughs> go to the church and preach. <laughs> There's plenty there. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You know, everything that sits on a seat out there is not going to heaven right now. Nope. I've seen people walk in shacking up for years. I had somebody I worked with that came from another state. When I taught him about the blood of Jesus, I can't believe this. I never heard this. He said, my, my girlfriend and I shacked up for two years at a real big church over in Arizona, somewhere in somewhere that direction. And uh, they had seven pastors there. And no one ever told me it was sin. But that's a crying shame. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Think about it. Mm -hmm. Everyone that sits on a pew is not saved. Right. And the laws need to come. This is where they need to come. Yeah. To hear. It'd be like going to the emergency room. You go to the emergency room. You, like a broke arm, I had to do that one. I come back from Poland, growing legs out, blind eyes popping over, cancer disappearing. I broke my arm, praying, praying. I had to get surgery, plating six screws in it. Don't ask me. He's God and I'm not. Mm -hmm. oh, at Poland, I made my first trip to third heaven. I don't know if that's involved, baby. But anyway, but the thing is, when I went to the emergency room, I expected to get help. Can you imagine me broken arm? I mean, it's broken too. And uh, an elderly couple that's come to our church, the snow banks are real high. And I was helping a nurse was come to visit my dad to live where we live now. And she got stuck. She turned in a horse for him, got stuck. And I'm trying to get her unstuck. I went back to get a big board to pry out. And all of a sudden, my legs went over my head. And the elderly couple driving in, the banks were real, real high. They looked over. They said, oh, there's pastor in the parking lot. They looked. I don't see him anymore. They come. I'm broken arm laying on the ground. But when I went to the emergency room, I expected help. 
Can you imagine going to the emergency room broken? We're not dealing with that. It'd be like coming to a church in adultery, fornication, homosexuality. We're not going to tell you that's wrong. We're not going to cast those demons out of you. I personally don't believe you can commit those sins without demons. I think that Cordial 3 and 8, I think that's why, why the Old Testament, they stone them to death because sins are, demons are, are, are passed on through illicit sexual union. I believe that's one of the reasons they stone to death. So you could probably say, amen. I'm glad they don't do that today. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise amen. So when our heart is cut and broken open, we realize the help we always needed is being infused into us by the precious blood of Jesus right now. I want you to picture. And can, can we all stand together a moment? You want to, you can sit if you like. We can stand, go ahead. But picture and allow the Lord right now to open your heart up. And say, I, I realize I'm, you know if you're free or not. You don't have to have me tell you. You know, I probably could pretty quick. I might call some things out pretty quick. But don't worry, I would never deliberately embarrass you in front of people. I got something really heavy. I'll probably call you a whisper in your ear to get you free. Many times my wife and I would tell people to beat us in the office. We take them in there and try to get them delivered. If they want to be delivered, we put them out of the assembly. It's like a rotten, rotten apple in the middle of a bushel of good apples. It'll rot everybody. Mm -hmm. We're the gatekeeper. Yeah. If I let it come in the gate, I'm responsible. I'm the watcher of the wall. If I don't sound the trumpet and warn them, if they don't listen, they die. The blood's on their head. But if I don't warn them and they die, the blood's on my head. They're going to die, but the blood's on my head also. I have a biblical responsibility to blow the trumpet. That don't mean you slap everybody upside the head with the Bible and jump on them. There's a way. Be wise as a serpent, but harmless as a dove. Know how to build witness and minister to them. You know, you know, bring, bring them into an understanding of some things. Just stand in the presence of God right now. I mean, there's some, I mean, I, I'm sort of burn again. Yes, yes. It, but it, it's not like it's just an angel saying it. It's more like, like the glory of God. Mm. I feel just that, that weighted glory, mm. that yes. weighted glory in the house right now. Yes. Let, let God just open that heart. Let, let it open. If not here, later maybe pray beside your bed somewhere on a, at a sofa. I don't know. But you can open it right now. And the blood of Jesus is right here to infuse to you what you always wanted, to have that life free of your past. When you really cross the blood of Jesus, you have no past. You have no skeletons in your closet. The word justified, like you see even 1 Corinthians chapter 6, you see throughout Scripture, the word justified means just as if it never happened. Today, it can be just as if it never happened to you. Well, I, they, were, they molested me. They cheated on me. They, they left me. They abandoned me with 20 kids or whatever. But you can cross the bloodline of Jesus today. It'd be just as if it never happened. That when you think about that, you'll never feel that sour feeling above your solar plex area. That there won't be that bitterness anymore. Oh, you may remember it, but it will have no power over you. Hallelujah. There'll be no pain. Yes, I, I, I remember the pain of breaking my arm, but you can touch it today. It's not in pain anymore. Amen, because it's healed. Uh, you can be healed in your spirit today. Your soul can be healed and set free today. In the name of Jesus, yes. let's begin to pray together right now. Amen. If you need special prayer, in just a moment, I want you to just Find you a believer next to you. <clears throat> if you're led to somebody new, but don't just run around doing it. Especially Team Supernatural, you have permission. Anybody you that's in Team Supernatural, anybody you feel to go to, you can go to them. God, I know you've been trained. I, I, I know your, your DNA. Let's pray together. God, I speak healing. I speak deliverance, Lord. God, you want them to prosper and be to help them. 
even as their soul prospers, Lord, uh, those that are still in pain, uh, those that are still reliving that horrible situation, those that, that have not released their earthly father, Lord, let them release them today and embrace their heavenly father today in this house. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Like a child. Like a child that trusts. Like a child that believes. Like a child that knows the food's going to be there. There'll be a bed to sleep in the night. Like a child. Trust like a child. I release a breaker anointing upon this room right now. If those listen to me in faraway lands, uh, I release a breaker anointing upon you right now. In the name of Jesus, be healed. <clears throat> be <clears throat> set free. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> From the front of this room to the back of this room, I release a breaker anointing, Lord. That chains, I hear chains breaking. I hear chains breaking. I hear chains breaking right now. Yokes breaking off right now. In the name of Jesus. I need you, Lord. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty. Do you feel what's swirling in this room? There's a presence of the Holy God. Abba Father is in this room. He is in this room right now. He wants to embrace you. He says, cast your cares upon me because I care for you. Emotional pain, spirit of pain, I command you to leave them right now. I command those wounds, those childhood wounds, wounds, Lord God, to be healed right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, even though later in life as I was in war, God, you heal me. You heal the brokenhearted. You heal post-traumatic stress disorder. You healed it in Jesus' name. Whom the Son shall make free is free indeed. Thank you, Lord. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty, Lord. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. You're in the presence of God. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid for love to embrace you right now. Don't be afraid for love to embrace you right now. And let me say something else prophetic. Some of you have had some bad experiences with relationships in life. Yes. Whether you're a man or a woman, I want you to know right now that all men are not like that one you knew. And all women are not like the woman you knew. Amen? There's good men. There's good women out there. Godly ones. Because some of you are doing the same thing that people do about their earthly father. You're judging men and women by your experience, a bad experience. Forgive them. Let God direct. Thank you, Lord. God is so good. God is so good. Yes, we worship you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. We bow before you, Lord. Even myself preparing this message, the Lord began to speak to me and highlight some things that, that I, I had to deal with that I didn't know I had to deal with, but I realized it, 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 it affected me. I won't go into detail, but, but I realized it affected me. I had to deal with it. I'm just being honest. Amen. Hey, I'm a fellow traveler in this world. Amen. I put one shoe on a time every morning like you do. Amen. I don't walk on water all the time. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you for highlighting to us, showing us areas. You may see some scores of the past, but you won't feel the pain of it. And I've seen right, right in you, Burke, a woman in physical tore up by a dog. She trained dogs for Hollywood. Come in my meeting, cut bandaged gauze, prayed. The next morning she woke up. Not only was the wounds healed, but she had not one single scar. So God, even emotionally, can heal your wounds, but he can even remove the scar if he needs to. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. God bless all you that have been watching in four-way places. Thank you, Lord.